The swing head, the wobble head, the hard head, these are all names for the exact same technique. This lure is basically a hook that is attached to a football or rugby head style weight. You then thread on a soft plastic of your choice, you cast this bait out and you reel it across the bottom. This technique became extremely popular when Tommy Biffle, a professional bass fisherman, won a tournament back in 2010 on his home lake of Fort Gibson. At the time, a lot of people had not heard of a hard head or a swing head, but then guess what? Tommy Biffle went ahead and won another tournament on this technique. Now, after a couple of major tournament wins, the whole category of swing heads was really born. Now, although a lot of you know about this technique, there's probably a lot of you that also still don't fish it a whole lot. And today I wanna talk about five big mistakes that a lot of anglers make with this swing head. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. One of my favorite swing heads on the market is the Trocar swing head. I've always been a big fan of Trocar hooks. They are extremely sharp and it takes a lot less effort to penetrate a bass with these hooks. I also like the fact that this swing head comes with different size hooks on the exact same weight. So if I'm fishing for smallmouth, I'll use a three-aught hook. If I'm fishing for largemouth, I'll use a four-aught hook. Not only can you get this swing head at Sportsman's Outfitters, but you can pick up other swing heads, other tackle, rods, reel, line, everything. So if you guys are on the market for some new tackle, click the links down below in the description. When it comes to a swing head, I fish a 5 8 ounce most of the time. I can really effectively fish anything from 5 foot deep to 20 foot deep with that size. I also fish it on 15 pound fluorocarbon. My rod is a 7 foot 3 inch medium heavy power fast action rod. And I actually like a 6.2 to 1 gear ratio reel with this technique. A little bit more on gear ratio later in the video. Mistake number one when it comes to fishing the swing head is something that is is very broad. We are going to get into some specific details about the swing head, but I think that a lot of guys simply overcomplicate this technique. Now, this is really one of the more easy techniques that you can use in bass fishing, but the fact that you can basically put any soft plastic that you want on the back of a swing head, I think that is sometimes what complicates this for fishermen. I have been with a lot of guys in my boat that just spend way too much time trying to find the perfect plastic or the perfect color. And I think that a lot of times it is just simply best to simplify everything when it comes to bass fishing and especially a swing head. Now, because you are typically casting this bait out and reeling it across the bottom, I tend to like baits that don't have too much plastic on them. Those bigger soft plastic baits can cause a lot of lift, which makes it hard to keep that bait on the bottom. So I really prefer smaller creature baits. Now my two favorite plastics for this technique are the Strike King Mini Scrub, as well as the small version of the Guggen Bandito Bug. Both of these plastics are fairly small and it just allows you to have a lot more control of what that bait is doing down there on the bottom. The other thing that I like about that size plastic is that if you fish lakes that have a lot of smallmouth or spotted bass in them, they tend to get that size plastic a little bit better than the bigger soft plastics. The second big mistake that I see a lot of guys make with a swing head is they don't maintain contact with the bottom. That is what this bait was designed to do, was to come across the bottom, especially hard bottom, something that is like a shell or rock bottom. And, and there's a few things that can really help help you to maintain bottom contact that I'm gonna show you right now. So the first thing is, is when you make a cast out there, obviously you're gonna make sure that that bait actually hits the bottom. But once it hits the bottom, like as in right now, I'm still letting this bait sink, I'm in about 15 foot of water. Now, once that bait hits the bottom, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to drag that bait across the bottom. And I will drag it for about 10 feet. And I, honestly, you get a lot of bites doing this as well. But the reason that I'm dragging this bait like this is because I wanna get my fluorocarbon down. I wanna get it in a straight line from my rod tip 
to my lure. If you start reeling, as soon as that bait hits the bottom, there's going to be a bow in your line. Even if you're using fluorocarbon, which sinks, there's still going to be a bow in your line. And I wanna get that bow out. If you start cranking with a bow in your line, it causes a lot of lift on that lure, and that's not going to help you maintain bottom contact. Now, the other thing that I like to do is I use a little bit lower gear ratio reel. This is a 6.2 to one reel, and that just allows me to kind of fish this bait a little bit slower across the bottom, which helps helps to keep it down. If you're reeling this really fast with a high gear ratio reel, that, that bait's gonna come and it's gonna lift off the bottom and you're not going to get bit. So using a little bit lower gear ratio really helps me to keep that bait down there on the bottom. Now, swing head mistake number three actually comes down to the rigging process of the bait. And this is something that is a very simple tip, but it also really helps you to hook up with more fish that bite this bait. Now, it's really important to know that the best area to really fish this style of lure is actually on a hard bottom. I use it a ton on rock bottom. You can also use it on a bottom that is maybe shell. In some parts of the country, you have bottom that is clay. Now, there are some swing heads on the market that have a pointed nose on them, which helps them to come through grass a little bit better, but I tend to fish other lures a lot of times when I'm around grass. Now, with that being said, because I primarily fish this bait on hard bottom, you do not need to expose the hook of this bait. When I rig up a hard head, I'm going to line up my piece of plastic. I'm going to feed it through the top part of that plastic, and then I'm going to punch it through, but I'm not going to expose it. I'm actually going to leave that hook outside of the bait. Believe it or not, this will really improve your hookup rate, which means it will turn more bites into fish catches. Now, if you're fishing on a hard bottom that has some random sticks or stumps, you can still get it to come through most of that cover without hanging up. But if you're fishing it on a hard bottom that has a lot of wood, maybe there's brush piles, maybe there's standing timber, that is the time where I'm actually going to expose this hook, where I put the point of that hook into the plastic. Now, the fourth mistake that a lot of anglers make with a swing head is actually on the hook set. This is probably where I see most guys miss a ton of fish. And this is something that honestly, I struggled with a lot when I first started fishing a swing head because, you know, if you fish baits like a spinner bait, as you're kind of cranking that bait along or even a chatter bait, pretty much as soon as you feel a thump, you can swing and most of the time you kind of have that fish. Now, the big difference is, is that a swing head is down there on the bottom. And when a bass hits it, what they typically have to do is they have to pin that bait to the bottom. And so sometimes they don't always get that bait that well. So the biggest thing that you can do that will really help you to hook up with a lot more fish when they bite it is simply just keep reeling. This is something that it, it takes a little bit of patience, but I'm telling you it is well worth it. So if I'm out here and a fish starts biting my bait, I literally just keep reeling. And if I start to feel the weight of that fish, I'm simply just going to swing into it. Now, the big thing is, is I'm using a pretty sharp hook with that Trocar swing head. You do not have to jack these fish. Even though it's a single hook, you do not have to jack them. So once I feel that weight of that fish, I'm simply just going to swing into it almost like a crankbait hook set. And nine times out of 10, that is plenty enough to hook up with that fish. So big thing that you do not wanna do, as soon as you feel that big thump, don't just set the hook. Now the fifth and final swing head mistake actually comes down to the retrieve of this bait. As I talked about earlier, most of the time when I fish this bait, I'm gonna cast it out, I'm gonna let it hit bottom, and I'm gonna start reeling it at a slow to medium pace. Now, there are a few things that I like to do during the retrieve that I think can help me get more bites out there on the water. I feel that if there that if you have a whole lake that is full of fishermen and they're all fishing a swing head, you actually get more bites in them by doing these couple of things. Now, the first First one is simply killing the bait. When you're reeling it and you are bringing it across the bottom, every now and then, just stop that bait. Just kill it, just pause it for a second. And this is something that I talk about a lot with pretty much every technique. I feel a lot of times that bass will track our lures. And, and if you watch some underwater footage of bass, you would be surprised at how many fish are actually following your lure and then they get 
uninterested and they turn off from it. So what I feel is that if a bass is tracking that bait and all of a sudden you just kill it, that bass will basically just run into your bait. They, they basically have to make the decision, do I bite this thing or do I just swim on past it? So there are a lot of times where I am bringing that bait across the bottom and I stop it and bam, that's when a bass will actually pick it up. So every time that I cast this bait out and make a retrieve, I will pause it usually one or two times during the retrieve. Now, if I find that every bass that I am catching is hitting it on the pause, then I will do this a lot more than just once or twice during the retrieve. I may up it to three or four times. So that is something alone that can help you to get more bites than other anglers. Now, the other thing that will really help you to get more bites with this bait is by using speed. This is something, again, I use with a number of different techniques. You know, for example, a deep diving crankbait. Sometimes the best way to catch big bass on a deep diving crankbait is by absolutely ripping that thing as fast as you can. I mean, just across the bottom. And the same thing can happen with your swing head. Now, the big thing when you are fishing a swing head fast that you have to do is up your weight. Instead of using a 5 eighths, you might have to go to 3 quarter or even a bigger size because the more you reel it, the more that bait is gonna wanna lift off the bottom. So you have to have a heavier weight to keep that bait down there on the bottom. So those two things though, I really feel it can help you to get a lot more bites with a swing head. Now, if you live up in the Midwest or Northern part of the country, actually even some places down in the South, there are starting to be a lot more zebra mussels in our lakes. And zebra mussels have extremely sharp edges and they will chew up your line. And they grow on hard spots on the bottom. They grow in a lot of the same places that I like to fish a swing head. Now, the way that a swing head is designed, that line kind of sits closer to the bottom. So you really want to make sure you are checking your line constantly with a swing head. Or the other thing that you can do is actually fish a Tokyo rig as a replacement. And I actually talk about how you can use the Tokyo Tokyo rig in this video right here. If you guys enjoyed this video, I think you will like this one as well. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.